Okay, so let's have a look at another example. Show you a bit of painting work and some of the blends you can do. So here I'm going to try and create a fire effect on a mini. And so I'm just picking a couple of colors and painting the basic color. This will look better honest. So, okay, so we've got the basic effect there. A little bit of white as well. And then if I grab my smear tool, one of the nice things I can do, I'll just soften this down, less pressure, is smear the colors together and everything works all in real time. Particularly clever, and you probably don't notice this in here, but it will also do this over several objects. So the door where I've managed to smear some of that over is actually a separate object. So there's no problem smearing or using pretty much any tool in body paint when it's painting over multiple objects. So it doesn't have to be a single object, multiple objects, no problem at all. And you can see the refresh rate is all nice and quick with body paint. Okay, let's do some other stuff. So I'm just going to go into the attributes now. And I'm going to go and grab a multi brush. So we saw a little touch of this before, but a multi brush is very powerful because it enables you to paint in several channels at the same time. In this particular case, I'm going to adjust the color, the bump, and the specular all in one go, which is rather powerful. So I'm just going to pick a color there, and I'm going to use the projection mode here and I'm going to render up the scene because you can use the render engine built in and a very special feature of body paint is once it's rendered you can actually carry on your texturing here and this is excellent for seeing very detailed uh, texturing so if you're affecting something like highlight as this brush is you really need to render and see what that's going to look like so that all works rather nicely. Okay another example got an axe here I'm just going to show you how fast you can texture a complete axe even though the axe is made up of multiple objects and this is a popular technique used in uh, by movie people for texturing entire characters but in this case we'll texture an object so I've got a big old completed texture of an axe and I just use the projection cut and paste that we had before and we can texture the, app, uh, uh, the axe all in one go so we just pop that on here and we just hit enter same as we did before and there we go, all of the side of the axe is textured in one go. Slight problem that the other side isn't textured. Good news is there's a special mode for this, which says project on invisible parts, which will actually then texture both sides of the axe simultaneously. So let's do that again. So I'll just resize the texture. You can see the preview of Body Paint 3D is very nice as well. So it's very easy to do these things. And obviously with projection cut and paste like this, it's quite nice to be an orthographic view like this so it's nice and easy to texture but you can do this in the 3d view if you want okay so that's lined up quite nicely so i'll we'll stamp that down and now if we flick to the 3d view you'll see we've got the front and the back done so that's 90 percent of our texture work done we've still got a bit of work to do because it's not quite caught the edges and this is where the clone tools are rather handy so like i said most of the tools they'll all work in the 3d view as well so here i can use a clone tool in the 3D view and spin around my model and it works just as it would with an ordinary texture even though it's having to do a lot of work here so you can work this way but you can still see it's very nice and responsive so I simply pick where I want to clone from and to and just clean up the model in this way so you can see that's basically how you texture entire objects and it's so nice that you can spin around and look for problem areas which you can't really do if you're in an image editor so we can just clean up areas, clone from one place to the next and then we could darken bits off with a burn tool so doesn't matter what channel you want to paint in or what area you want to texture you can do. Okay let's have a look at a more complicated example that's been textured this dinosaur great job here as you can see so much more complicated model but similar principle used to texture this so let's show you the principle that they would use First off we freeze the view because you can actually projection cut and paste images bigger than the standard view that you're looking at um, and this is great for high resolution maps i.e. when you're going to zoom in real detail onto the model. I then flick off to Photoshop and I'm just going to save a Photoshop file which will then give me a effectively a screenshot of this particular view that I've got. Here I am in Photoshop and this is how a lot of artists will texture real big characters because Photoshop does have some very nice tools 
Uh, so if you want to work a lot with Photoshop you can do and use this mode is quite cool to do. And uh, basically we texture away and you should see as we save, just save the head number two. Okay, so we've got that saved, flick into body paint, merge the textures together, and we'll bring in that new texture. And then it comes, and the nice thing is it's correctly placed, so you can just see that's how you do it. So you freeze the view, texture away in Photoshop, bring it back and it'll be projected exactly where you want it. You then go to another view and do the same principle. So if I wanted to start texture in this side, so obviously if I've done a side projector, uh, is not going to project on the head. So I can now move to say a top view and do the same thing, freeze the view, get my texture going, pop that into Photoshop and then work on cleaning up where the two textures would intertwine, make sure that's nice and crisp. And you could texture the whole head this way, so you simply move to one view to the next. So the typical is a, a side view and a front view or a side view and a top view depending on what you're texturing. So same principle here, we just pop into Photoshop do the texture work, so here's the texture work done and you can see how nicely they link up so you kind of cross-reference with your uh, previous texture information save that out and again because we froze the view and we saved that exactly out it's going to line up spot on in Body Paint 3D and that's the principle you use to do this and obviously that's a lot more difficult if you don't have the tool to manually line everything up like this where it's done automatically. So back to main camera. There we go and you can see the top and the side have been done and they line up rather nicely. Okay another example. So in this particular example we're just going to do a bit more texturing show some of the brushwork off. So here I'm going to paint a bit of human skin and we grab a skin type colour, so I'm in the ordinary paint mode and I'm going to paint a bit in the bump, also in the specular of course I can pick different colours or textures to go in, in into each of these you can paint in as many channels as you like simultaneously and as I paint here you can see that I'm actually affecting the specular, the bump and the colour because there's a little bump there, the specular which is the shiny bits if actually updated and if I render up we can see the rendered view there, clearly a difference, so it has affected all the channels. We can also mess around with things like the scale of the bump, or so that's quite easy as well. So if we wanted to have more skin kind of uh, bump appear, we can ramp that up. I'll just speed this up just so you can see how you paint here. So of course we could just fill the entire face up with a fill layer but just to show you how the paint tools work then let's have a look at uh, other things that we can do just pop on a new layer and on this one we're just going to paint a little bit of makeup so I'll just turn off bump specular because all we really want to affect here is colour. So a little bit of eyeshadow onto the character, nice and easy, and that's on its own separate layer so we can mix it later. Maybe we want a bit of rouge on our cheek. There we go.